Hello, I was recently reminded that it's been a while since I last released a Sourcefire quick tip. So here's a new one. A few weeks back, I recorded some screencasts to introduce some of the new features that were added to Sourcefire's current release of the 3D system version 4.9. So in this quick tip, let's take a close look at some of the new policy management tools that are now available. Because the subject is quite large and these tips are supposed to be quick, I have split it into two halves. The first covers configuration, diffs, reports, and controlling how new rules will be added to your detection policy. The second part focuses on policy layering and the new rule state manager. I hope this content is of use. If it is, let me know at the normal email address. Thank you. Here, I'm provided with a list of policies that I can edit, export, and delete just like I used to be able to. However, we also have a few new options. The reports and compare tools are simply great news. As someone who frequently visits customers and advisors on policy changes, I always missed a simple way that would show some proof of the work that I had undertaken. Let's have a quick look at the difference between two versions on the policy. On the left, let's have the previous version, and on the right, let's look at the current version. I can step through the differences one at a time with these next and previous buttons, or I can generate a PDF of all the changes and differences with a comparison report button. PDF reports of the current policy can also be created via the report link. Now, let's dive in and create a new policy from scratch so I can show you the policy design tool from the inside. Page. It provides a summary of the configuration we have built. Right now, it is totally vanilla. The only thing set is a base configuration that's provided out of the box. This is a kind of a one-size-fits-all base. Let's name the policy and provide a description. The protection mode of a policy reflects the actions that could be taken upon detection of an event. Inline relates to IPS actions and passive reflects only detective controls. This is not the same as selecting a physical connection method to the network itself. A passive policy can be deployed onto a 3D sensor that is connected inline in the network, thus providing an inline IDS capability. When the protection mode is set to passive, no drop actions will take place even if they are configured to. This is a great way to start your configuration without being worried about enabling the wrong rule in a drop and generate events mode. Think of it as a useful learning safety net. Under the protection mode, we have base policy selection. It is important to understand what this is and how it works. Sourcefire provides three base policies to get you started on your tuning and customization process. It is possible that one of these policies could be close to perfect for you out of the box, but more than likely you will need to make some modifications to represent your own security posture. Selecting a base policy that reflects your security desires is important because it affects how new detection prevention capabilities are added to the system. Let's look at one of the VRT's recent SCU release notes. For those who don't know, SCU stands for Security and Enhancement Update. Think of it as all the latest detection capabilities. When this SCU is applied, it will add new rules to my policy in a state that relates to the base policy. Here I can see that with balanced security and connectivity as my base policy, SID 16346 will be enabled in a drop and generate event state. If I have a base policy of connectivity over security, it will not be enabled. Remember that the protection mode for my example policy has been set to passive. The drop action will not be taken. It will result in only an alert being raised upon the detection of exploitation of this vulnerability. You can change your policy's base selection at any time. It is no longer a one-time choice. If you did decide you do not want any SCU updates to change any rule states, you can simply click on this box. Targeted detection engines is a new concept. You can now link an intrusion policy to either a detection engine, group of engines, or a sensor. This allows you to quickly apply changes to the detection engines that will be affected when updates are made to this policy. Variables now have a much more managed hierarchy. 
The system default. This is always used unless the variable has been set at a higher level, either at a policy level or at a detection engine level. I'm going to set the home net to 192.168.0.0 slash 16 in my policy. I can come back and add to or change this value at will. Notice that this field has some pretty good input validation. If I try to enter an invalid character, it's picked up immediately and flashes red. It also checks the content I enter to make sure it makes sense. The next session reflects the rule configuration. This is where you will spend most of your time, selecting, enabling and tuning the rule set that will run on the targeted detection engines. We'll come back to look at this in depth in a few moments because first we need to take a look at policy layering.